question is, what does this little horn represent? I'm going to be open and frank with you. There is only one power in the world that fits every single one of these characteristics that we've taken a look at. And that is the Roman Catholic Papacy. And let me go quickly through the reasons why. Number one, did the papacy rise after Rome was divided? Yes. Did the papacy arise among the nations of Western Europe? Yes. Did the papacy rise from Rome, the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom? Yes. Did the papacy uproot three of those kingdoms? Yes, I wish I had time to talk more about that. The Vandals, the Heruli, and the Ostrogoths were uprooted by the papacy because they did not agree with the papacy's theology. The great words or blasphemies are defined in the Bible as someone who claims to be God on earth and someone who claims to have the power to forgive sins. Does the papacy claim, at least did it claim in the past, that the Pope is the representative of God on earth? Absolutely. Does the papacy say that it has the right to forgive sins? Absolutely. It's called the confessional. Did the Roman Catholic papacy persecute the saints of the Most High? It most certainly did. You know of things, for example, like the Inquisition. Did the Roman Catholic papacy rule for exactly 1,260 years? Absolutely. From 538 to 1798. Did the papacy claim to have power to change God's holy law? Absolutely. You look in the catechisms, and we're going to talk more about this in a future lecture, you'll find in the catechisms that the second commandment has disappeared. So when you take out one commandment, you still have to have ten, so the catechisms divide the tenth commandment in two. And they say, don't covet your neighbor's goods, and don't covet your neighbor's wife, as if those are two separate and different commandments. Furthermore, the papacy, as we're going to study, has claimed to have the power to change God's holy day of rest from Sabbath to Sunday. That's where the observance of Sunday really originates. Furthermore, the papacy made the attempt to change God's times. Now, I don't have time to get into all of this issue about the times, but the word times in Scripture is referring to God's prophetic calendar, how God says that prophetic events are going to take place or transpire. And if I had time, I would talk to you about two Roman Catholic uh, priests who actually established two rival methods of interpreting prophecy. One is a preterism established by Luis de Alcázar, who said that the prophecies about the Antichrist were fulfilled in the past with a nasty individual called Antiochus Epiphanes. And another one arose, Francisco Rivera, who said that prophecy, no, all those prophecies about the Antichrist, they're going to be fulfilled in the distant future. And so what happened is God's prophetic calendar, which showed that the papacy was fulfilling these prophecies, was changed to the past and to the distant future. Certainly, the papacy attempted to change God's prophetic times. So every single detail fits the Roman Catholic papacy to a T. Power that is going to be ruling when Jesus comes. Yes, because it says here that dominion will be taken away from him, him and given to the saints of the Most High. That means that the papacy must have two periods of dominion. One in the past, 1,260 years, and one in the future where it will control, basically, the political systems of the world as we're going to study and will be destroyed by the brightness of the coming of Christ.